Now let's move to uh, today's perspective guest. And my guest today is an absolute legend in the world of sailing. A legend really catapulted to the top of the sailing leaderboard last year when she became the first overall winner of the Golden Globe race. Now I want you to think about exactly what that entails. It's a trip of 30,000 nautical miles down France, the Atlantic, east through the Southern Ocean, around under Australia, back up the Atlantic to the finish again. Took my guest 233 days, approaching eight months, on your own, solitary, of course, uh, often in very, very rough seas as well. well. Let's find out all about it then from Kirsten Neuschäfer, who joins us uh, now. Great to have you with us, particularly at the hour of day uh, where it is where you are at the moment. So thanks very much. Tell us in your words what that is like, because there must surely be incredibly hard moments. It's pitch black, you're in a storm, you're trying to sleep, perhaps leaving the boat basically uh, unattended, really, without drifting off, off course. Yeah, it certainly has its hard moments. Um, the solitude gets to you. There are stormy moments at times. Um, sometimes you're trying to navigate and you can't even see the sun or any other celestial bodies. But it's been an absolutely amazing experience. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. And it's not that you can just rely on your computer to sort yourself either, out either, can you? Because it's based on the first solo navigation race from 1968. And they're trying to sort of stay to that image, if you like, by making sure the boats are not that older, no bigger than a certain size, GPS isn't permitted, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's it. And I guess that's the main thing. There's no technology, so you don't have um, modern weather forecasting. So often you don't know, you know, how long it's going to take for the wind to fill in or what kind of weather to expect. And um, yep, you're doing it all with a sextant. It, do you get used to it? I mean, isn't it terrifying? You do get used to it. You really do. Um, after a while, it becomes a lifestyle. And um, that's the beauty of the race is because it's old school, you learn to read the weather far more than we do in this modern day and age where we're looking at screens all the time in our lives. And, and at night, I mean, presumably you can just go a long way off course if you're not careful? Um. Most of it was in the deep ocean, so if you did land up going off course, um, there wasn't really that much risk of crashing into land or, um, you know, in the southern ocean, there's nothing, there's hardly any traffic, so you can go for weeks and weeks without even seeing another ship. So if you go off course a little bit, it doesn't matter, you'll correct yourself when you get your position the next day. And you had to correct yourself in another way as well, didn't you, going to the rescue of uh, one of the other sailors who got into difficulty? Yes, uh, that's true. Finnish sailor Tapio Lehtinen's boat um, sank quite uh, unexpectedly and um, it went down very quickly. And I happened to be the closest human on the planet to him at the time. So I went to his assistance. And what was that like, that moment when you were sort of, uh, you know, united together? Uh, it was a great moment. I was really um, relieved to have him on board. And needless to say, he was really, really relieved to come aboard my boat, Minahaha, because he'd been floating in the Southern Indian Ocean for 24 hours in his life raft. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, a great moment of joy for me um, and for him, even though he just, you know, experienced the loss of his vessel. Uh, and then shortly after that, um, a ship came. So we transferred him onto the ship, which was a little bit more scary, getting close to a, a huge ship on a rolling ocean. So you didn't get disqualified then because you weren't solo anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately not. <laughs> they made exception there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about the finish? Uh, first woman ever to win. What was it like beating the men? It was good. Um, to be <laughs> honest, I didn't concentrate much on the aspect of being a woman. Um, like I always say, I was born a woman. I didn't have to do much towards that, but um, <laughs> I just wanted to be in the race as an equal, and, and that's what it was. And yeah, it was great just being back amongst humans after eight months. So. I mean, yeah, it must have been amazing. The, you know, I've, I've, you see those pictures of the kind of welcome that, that people get from, from the sailing world and just the, the general population as well. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. An overwhelming moment, um, something I'll never forget, a once-in-a-lifetime moment. Where does this come from in you? I mean, you've always been a, a sailor, haven't you, even when you were a kid sailing dinghies? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think uh, what appealed to me about this race was the adventure aspect. Um, I've loved, always loved traveling and exploring. 
and especially the outdoors and um, sailing encompasses all of that. And this particular race is so much an adventure race. So it really appealed to me in every aspect. It sounds like you're a, a bit of, you know, you don't mind being on your own, do you? You're a great cyclist as well. Yes, uh, that's true. Um, I, I do like being alone. I'm quite a solitary person. I like undertaking uh, solo adventures, shall I say. So, yeah, when I was um, 22, I undertook to cycle across Africa from north to south, and I did manage to do that. And that, too, was a very, very deeply rewarding experience. So, I mean, you, do you think you're someone who sort of thrives on that stress and adventure in life? I think I do. I think I do. Um, I've been doing it for a relatively long time. So I think by now it comes quite naturally to me, but it's definitely something that gives me a lot of satisfaction. And what comes next then? Well, um, I haven't decided that. I've got a few ideas, but I haven't made them public yet. And uh, for the next few months, I'd actually just like to spend some time documenting the journey, writing it down, um, perhaps work on a documentary. Uh, so those will be fun projects. I mean, does it make it difficult once you've achieved um, something like this? I mean, it's often said, isn't it, for example, just for footballers, once you've won the World Cup, once you've won the Champions League, what else is there to aim for? I guess so. Um, in some respects, it might make it difficult. People also ask me all the time what's next. So I guess there's a certain amount of expectation that there will be something next. Um, but I think there are so many adventures to be undertaken on this planet, so I'm not worried about um, <laughs> inventing something new. You think you'll always find something else? I definitely think so. <laughs> we look forward to seeing what it might be. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on the programme there. Uh, Kirsten Neuscher for joining welcome. us there from Canada. Uh, very nice to talk to you and find out about your exploits. We shall uh, see what comes next. Perhaps we'll uh, bring you news of that here on France 24. Thanks very much.